What's up you guys? In this video I'm going to be sharing with you the essential Vim commands and motions you should know. Even if you've been using Vim for a while, you might learn something new. To open Vim, you can type Vim, and for NeoVim, you can type NVim. If you just press enter, this will open it for your whole project. You can open a specific file by providing the name of the file. The default mode you'll be in is normal mode, denoted in the left-hand corner of the screen here. In normal mode, you can execute different commands. To exit Vim or NeoVim, you can type colon followed by Q and press enter. If you want to save your changes, you can do colon W and press enter, or you can do colon WQ to save and also quit NeoVim or Vim. Now let's start moving around. In Vim, your arrow keys are your H, J, K, L keys on the keyboard. This is because they are the easiest to access under your fingers. H is leftmost on your keyboard, so it'll move you to the left. L is rightmost, so it'll move you to the right. J kind of looks like a down arrow, so it'll move you down. And K being the last one will move you up. For most Vim motions, you can add a number before them. So if you want to move 5 to the left, you can do 5H or 5 lines down with 5J. Now let's talk about moving horizontally. You can use dollar sign to move to the end of the line. You can use the caret symbol to move to the first non-blank character in the line. And you can use zero to move to the start of the line. To go to a specific character in the line, you can use F, short for find, and then type the character you want to find. Let's say you want to find the next T. Then you can repeat this by using the semicolon to go forwards and comma to go backwards. If you want to do this in the opposite direction, then you would use capital F and then the character you want to find, let's do T again. Then again, you would repeat this with semicolon and in the other direction with comma. If instead you want to stop right before a character, then you can use T, short for till, and then the character you want to go to, let's do E, the cursor stops right before it, and again you can repeat this with semicolon or go back with comma. Again, we can do this in the opposite direction with shift T instead, and then the character we want to go to, let's do E again. You can use W to go to the start of the next word. You can use B to go backwards to the start of words, and E to go forwards to the end of words. Words are sequences of letters, digits, and underscores, so symbols and spaces would divide words. For example, here title and the colon are two separate words. Same with prototypes and the dot, string, and the comma. If you want to navigate through words but also include symbols, then you would use shift W. This will take you to the start of words including symbols. With shift B you'll go back to the start of words including symbols and with shift E to the end of words including symbols. Again, you can add numbers to these motions. If I want to move through two words, including symbols, I can do two and shift W. Vim also has the concept of paragraphs. Paragraphs are just blocks of text separated by empty lines. You can move down through paragraphs by using the closing curly brace and up with opening curly brace. You can move to the last line in the file by using shift G and the first one by using GG. To move to a specific line in the file, you can type the number of the line, let's say line 10, followed by shift G. If you want to move to the first visible line on your screen, you can do shift H for high, the middle line with shift M for middle, and the last visible line with shift L for low. You can also change where the cursor is positioned without moving it. You can use ZZ to place that line in the middle of your screen, ZT to place it at the top, and ZB to place it at the bottom. You can scroll down with control E, or scroll up with control Y. Now let's talk about curly braces, parentheses, and brackets. If I press percent, it'll look for the first curly brace, parenthesis, or bracket in your line and jump to its match. For example, if I press percent here, it'll take me to the closing curly brace for this class. If you keep typing percent, it'll cycle through the opening and closing curly brace. If you're within a pair of curly braces or parentheses, let's say I'm over here in line 12, I'm within the curly braces for the render function, then I can go to the opening one with opening bracket followed by opening curly brace. I can also go to the surrounding closing curly brace by pressing closing bracket followed by closing curly brace. 
if I'm within parenthesis, I can go to the opening one with opening bracket followed by opening parenthesis or the closing one by closing bracket and closing parenthesis. Then again, you could use percent to go to the other match. Now, what about searching for things? You can do forward slash. Let's say I want to find class. Then I can press enter and move forwards through the results with N and backwards with shift N. If I want to jump more than once, I can use a number like 2N, for example. You can also look for the word under your cursor by pressing star. Then again, move the results with N and shift N. If you want to execute a search backwards, you can use question mark followed by what you're looking for. Let's look for class again and press enter. Now, if I press N, it'll go in the other direction and shift N as well. Certain movements will add entries to the jump list. For example, moving to line 10 with 10 shift G will add an entry to the jump list. Let's do line four with four shift G. If you want to go back to where you were, if the entry was added to the jump list, then you can do control O to go back. If you want to go back forwards, then you can use control I. This is very useful for going back to where you previously were after having moved. Now that you know how to move around in Vim, how do you actually make changes to your file? First, you need to go into insert mode to actually be able to type text. If you press I, you'll go into insert mode right before the cursor. I'll press I. Now I can just type normally and type some text. To go back to normal mode, you can press escape. If you want to undo a change, you can press U for undo. And to redo a change, you can do control R. If instead you want to enter insert mode after the cursor, you can press A instead. Again, go back to normal with escape. Think of A as append. If you want to go into insert mode at the end of the line, then you can do shift A. You can use O to open a new line under the cursor and go into insert mode. If you want to open the line above the cursor, then you can do shift O. Vim also has several very useful operators. You have Y for yank, another word for copy, D for delete, this will also copy the text you delete, and C for change, which is the same as delete, but it'll take you into insert mode as well. To use these operators, you would first type the operator itself and then a motion for the text you want to modify. For example, let's say I want to use the D operator for delete, I can press D, and then E to delete to the end of the word. W would work the same here, so DW would delete to the end of the word. Or let's say I want to delete the current line and the line below, I can do DJ. Again, you can use numbers here. Let's say you want to delete nine lines down, you can do D9J. Or let's say I want to delete up to the opening curly brace but stop right before it, then I can do D followed by for till and then opening curly brace. You can use pretty much any motion here so the possibilities are endless. As I mentioned earlier when using D you copy the text as well. To paste anything you have copied you can use P to paste after the cursor or shift P to paste before the cursor. If you type most of these operators twice, they'll do the action but on the whole line. So if I want to delete the whole line I'm in, I can do DD. Or if you use the uppercase, it'll do it to the end of the line. So if I do shift D, it'll delete to the end of the line. The Y operator is for copying but not doing any deletions. So if I do YY, it'll copy the whole line and I can paste it with P. Or YW to copy to the end of the word and P to paste. With C, you'll do a deletion but also go into insert mode. So shift C will delete to the end of the line and also take me into insert mode. Or C, T for till and opening curly brace to delete right before the curly brace and go into insert mode. To repeat any change you've made to the file, you can use the dot operator. So if I do D, T, opening curly brace to delete right before the curly brace, I could go down and repeat this with dot. Or down in line 11, again, I can repeat this with dot. A more visual way of using any of these operators is with visual mode. If you press V, you'll go into visual mode and now you can execute a motion to highlight text. Again, let's do T opening curly brace, that'll highlight it. And now we can press the operator. So D for delete, Y for copy, C for deletion and going into insert mode. If I press D, I'll just delete it. It's the same thing as before, it's just a more visual way of doing it. 
If you're in visual mode and you need to go back to normal mode, then you can press escape again. You can also do search and replace in Vim. You can do colon followed by percent s slash what you want to replace. Let's say I want to replace all class name then do a slash and then type what you want to replace it with. I want to replace it with regular class, then slash again. And if you type G and press enter, it'll do it to the whole file. Let's undo that. Let's do colon percent S class name with class. If you do G and then type C and press enter, it'll ask for a confirmation for each one. So if I want to do it for the first one, I'll type Y for yes and for no for the second one and Y for yes for the last one. I'll undo all of this. There's another awesome Vim feature called text objects. We've talked about them a little bit with words and paragraphs. Those are two different text objects in Vim. If I'm in a word, for example, I can type an operator like D followed with I for inner or A for around. Let's do I and then specify the text object I want to modify. If I'm in a word and I want to delete that word, I can do W. There's quite a few different text objects and they're all very useful. If you're between double quotes, you can do D I double quote to delete everything inside of the double quotes. Again, you can use any operator. So if I want to copy everything inside of the double quotes, then I can do Y I double quotes or visual mode with V I double quotes. If you want to include the surrounding double quotes, then you can do V A for around double quotes or D A double quotes again with any operator. You don't even need to be inside of the text object. It'll find the next occurrence of it and do the action. So for example, if I'm back here and I do D I double quotes, it'll find the next one and delete everything within it. It also works with parentheses. So if I'm over here in line 13 and I do D I parentheses, it'll delete everything in the return here. It works with parentheses, brackets, curly braces, double quotes, single quotes, and tags as well. So if I'm over here inside this div and I do D I T for tag, it'll delete everything inside of the surrounding div. If I want to include the surrounding tag, then I can do D A T. A trick that I found useful is when using text objects and visual mode. If I do V A T, for example, you can cycle through the start and the end of the visually selected area with O. So this is an easy way to go to the surrounding start and closing tags. This works with other text objects. So if I do VA opening parenthesis, then with O I can go to the start and the end. Once you learn all these essential Vim motions and commands and start to develop some sort of muscle memory for them, you'll get a lot more efficient and accurate when editing your text. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe and press on the bell. That way you can stay up to date with more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.